Hi there. So I'm at Chalmette Battlefield at the Andrew Jackson Monument. Who knew? We always think of Andrew Jackson Monument as the one in the French Quarter of New Orleans at Jackson Square, but there's a monument right here. And what it does say, this is the construction of a monument honoring Andrew Jackson and his troops, recognizing the importance of the Battle of 18, the War of 1812, which happened on January 8, 1815. It took them 65 years to raise the money to put this up. It started in 1840, 25 years after the battle. They didn't finish until 1908, which was in the middle of Jim Crow. So we hear all this stuff about Jim Crow era, monuments got to come down. Oh, yeah. That was not about yes. anything other than the War of 1812 when this monument went up. But what it does is only seven men died. Jackson's strategy was phenomenal and his energy unsurpassed. He had a bullet that he was carrying through the battle that he had had for weeks. Plus, he had dysentery. He came down here to save New Orleans, and he had to get everybody in order fast because the British had already landed. And he, they figured out which way the British were going to come from. They figured that the British were going to come from the south of New Orleans to that field right across from me. They, they'd set up a camp about nine miles south. Jackson quickly figured out that, and then he built this mound here see behind me, there's a rampart with the canal on it. So we walk over there, and I'll let you see a little bit here. You can uh, get a grasp of how tall this monument is. It's 125 steps, roughly a little over 100 feet tall. And it's right next to the battlefield. There's a great visitor center behind it. There's a house there, right there. You can see the old antebellum house. And in the distance is Chalmette Battlefield graveyard which has 15,000 people buried mostly Union soldiers from the Civil War 7,000 of those people are unknown soldiers they're taken care of by some of our friends at the Monumental Task Committee who show up to make sure those those markers stay in touch because who else is going to take care of an unknown soldier from the Civil War from the Union here in New Orleans but the Monumental Task Committee does if you can see right here you can see what was called the Rodri Canal. You can see the embankment. This is the field that the British came across. They came across there and they, the Ursuline nuns were praying for success. And here you had roughly about 7,000, well actually about 5,000 men show up to help from Louisiana. They were from Mississippi, which wasn't part of the country yet. It was a state. Kentucky, Tennessee, Choctaw Indians. New Orleans had 29% free men of color. 500 free men of color showed up to fight, 10% of the fighting force. Plus the, the U.S. Marines, the Navy, everybody was out here. Half of them didn't have guns, so they went to Jean Lafitte and Barry Terry to say, listen, we need your help. He was a pirate. <laughs> what Jackson did, and Jackson really didn't want to cut a deal with him, but he realized he had to. Jackson actually put him like at the very front here. Because you can see this goes on for about a mile, this battle line. He put Lafitte's guys in the front because he, he had his observation deck right close to here and he wanted to be able to keep an eye on Lafitte's people. So they provided all this. The British came and fortunately some things went wrong. Like they didn't figure out the current of the river. They mislanded by a mile and a half when they were trying to attack the, the West Bank. Over here, they, the guy that was in charge of bringing the stuff to get across the canal forgot him. So they were only like 150 feet away. I mean, think about it. these were not, the, the Kentucky guys had the Kentucky long rifles, so they were just picking them off, the Brits. But the Brits, you know, those days, you were, you were 100 feet away, you could run that in a few seconds, but they had no way to get across the canal that Jackson had built because they forgot the, uh, they call them Mullins, to, to get across the canal. But this was just an amazing deal. But what it did was it brought the country together in a way that was phenomenal. And even though the Treaty of Gant had been signed a few weeks prior, word hadn't got out, the Treaty of Gant was only in the areas that were under battle. So the British could have actually taken Louisiana Purchase, which we had just bought. Instead, the United States got it, developed it, New Orleans became this amazing city starting in 1812, and by 1860 was the sixth largest city in America, much twice the size almost of Chicago. Uh, went on to have, and that was also because of Jeff Davis put a railroad in, the gas and purchase in 1854, to connect LA to Houston and Houston to New Orleans. So this is a little bit of trivia here, anecdotes about, about life. I want to thank a lot of people like WLAE, the Battle of New Orleans, a lot of people have made documentaries about this, but it's clearly, you can see the Mississippi River behind me. 
and just the oak trees. Just a gorgeous place to come um, and learn about our New Orleans culture and history. Have a great day. And our, our, our website is savenolaheritage.org.